Hey, what's up guys and welcome to the final episode of the day. I'm going to be giving you part 25 of what if Naruto returned different after his training trip. I posted 5 what if today so go ahead and check them out. I post a new series what if Naruto was from the two greatest clans so go ahead and enjoy that and I also post a new episode of what if Naruto was neglected by everyone so go ahead and enjoy it as well guys and over on anime making 2 I posted what if Naruto was a god amongst man and I also post a new episode of what if Aizuna Uchiha was Naruto's ancestor so go ahead and check out those and I hope you guys enjoy each and every one of them and remember if you're new and this is the first time you hear my voice and you enjoy the videos on both anime making and anime making too go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become a part of the anime making family and thank you for all of your help and your support guys and also remember to comment down below and tell me if you're new i'll be replying and talking back to all of you so yeah without further ado let's begin this new episode start the intro So, the last part we left off, Neji was captured as Hanabi broke him out after finding out that Hinata was doing the cage bird seal on every member to see if any of them was a traitor. As after hearing the reports, Hinata said, find her and bring her back dead or alive. As Hanabi and Neji went through the streets, slaughtering ninjas who came upon them. As they were surprised when Sasuke Uchiha appeared. But after a quick survey, they realized it was a Sasuke. And it was Naruto, and the entire shinobi force was there, ready to attack Naruto, but he was outside the walls of Konoha, so he could flash away with ease, as he held on to both Hanabi and Neji, and flash away. After a while, they appeared at Naruto's base, as Naruto was angry at Neji for getting himself caught in this. But Neji told him it wasn't his fault, it seems like Danzo has suspected something for a long time now. Naruto then went to find the girls, as he found Mei and Trish and Yujito, all of them naked sleeping in the bed, as they told him to join. But Naruto told them that it's not time for that now, as he told them to meet at the meeting room. When they appeared, Naruto explained the plans, as he told them that Neji is a leader of the army, and he also gave them their specific missions, as he asked him what he's going to do, and Naruto told them that he's going to hell, and with that he headed off. Later in the night, Yujito came to find Naruto, as she asked him if she can come with him, but Naruto tell her no, and he asked her if she would risk her life for his. She told him yes in a heartbeat, but Naruto tell her no, never say that. And if anything happened to him, she has to move on. And don't try and save him, because Mandos is going to be a very difficult opponent. So yeah guys, that was basically the last part we left off. You guys can switch across the place and check it out for yourself. So guys, let's begin this new episode, shall we? Let's begin. Damn it, said Naruto as his eyes were closed. As he slowly opened them. The sun. I hate it. Good morning, sleeping bastard. Ready for a big day? Said Yamato. Yeah, if anyone could be ready for it. Couldn't Uzumaki Naruto? You are Uzumaki Naruto, dumbass, said Yamato. And you can't afford to think of anything else now. What is the most important thing? Success, said Naruto. As he then heard a noise beside him. As he turned to see Yujito. Rise and shine, Naruto said. What's going on, she said, as she opened her eyes and smiled. Time skate. At the outskirts of Kumo, everyone know what to do, Naruto asked, as A, Mei, Neji, Hanabi, Yujito, and Killer B nodded. Good, one last thing, Raikagi, you're in charge of the headquarters while I'm gone. And Neji. Yes, Neji said. Get over here, said Naruto, as Neji walked closer to him. Give me your arm, Naruto said, as Neji. Extend his arm without question. As Naruto placed two finger on Neji's arm, as a skull-like tattoo appear. What's this? asked Neji. If this disappear on your arm, that means I'm gone. You know what to do then. As everyone nodded, Naruto then turned to Trish. Are you ready? As ready as I'll ever be, she said. As she thought about fighting Mondas. 
as Naruto didn't summon the Hell Gates. Meanwhile, at the Hokage's office, you know why you're here, said Snadi. Yes, said five people. Before we start, do you have any questions? I have one, said Sasuke. Yes, Uchiha? Who is she? asked Sasuke, as he pointed at the unknown girl with a lot of weapons on her. She's a member of your team, Uchiha. But we don't know anything about her, he said. And I don't know anything about you, the girl said. It doesn't matter to me anyway. Can you at least tell us your name, Sasuke asked. I don't have a name. What a charming lady, Sai said with a smile on his face. Alright enough, said Snally. She's an experienced demon hunter. If anything, she's far more experienced than all of you combined. So she will be instructing all of you how to kill demons. The Hokage nodded to the nameless girl. Very well. All of you, tell me your skills, said the girl. I am a medic, Sakura stated, and I also have Snadi's technique to use super power kaijutsu and I can cast modern genjutsu. Good, next, she said. I can use my drawing as weapons, said Sai. Using them, I can be a universal fighter. I can fight in the air and I can fight from afar, and also with close combat. My ability can give me almost endless amount of soldiers. I see. Now you with the sword, she said, and Sasuke scoff. I have the Sharingan. I have the devil arm in my possession, and I know a vast amount of pretty destructive jutsus. Excellent. And the last one. Urchimaru then cleared his throat. I can summon snakes, I have excellent speed and agility. I know jutsus of every element and can use them to their best capacity. Besides that, I'm a pretty good swordsman and I possess knowledge, unsealing techniques. Perfect, said the girl. You really made quite a team, Hokage-sama. Yes, these are the four best, said Snadi. I see. Now, I will introduce you to the art of killing demons. Well, the thing is, they're not difficult to kill, if you know the way. And I believe you know it, said Snadi. Of course, said the girl. As she then threw some photo at Snadi's decks. These are photos of main adapt demon species. You must recognize them instantly. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to fight them for long. Adapt Demon, Urchimar said. Second class, right? Yes, the girl said. Why them, Urchimar asked. Because they're the main threat. They attack in groups and they're very deadly. First class won't participate in a fight. They're just too useless. And higher classes, Sakura asked. The nameless girl frowned. They're more problematic. Simply because there is no simple way of destroying them. Each of them must be fighting in a different way. Are they tough? Yes, they are, said the girl. Meanwhile, in hell. Pretty. Just as I remember, said Trish, as she looked around. Naruto cleared his throat. Ahem. Finally, he shouted. Naruto has come back to hell. Suddenly, flying bats start to swirl around him. And then they gather into one place in front of him. As he then heard a chuckle. As a red-haired demoness appeared and smiled. Welcome, sir, she said. As she walked close to Naruto and rubbed his chest with her hand. The usual, she asked. You know I don't have time for it now, Nevan, said Naruto. The witch sighed in disappointment. She then looked at the blonde demoness beside him. And who is she? The witch asked. That's Trish, said Naruto. She will actually be leading our forces with you in the upcoming battle. She what? Nevan complained. But I thought I would go with you, Trish said. No, I go alone, said Naruto. We need more allies and Nevan would lead me to them. Then, the two of you will gather all our forces and wait for my return, Naruto said, as he started to walk off. An hour later, Did you manage to get something on Mondo's castle, Naruto asked. Yes, said Nevan. It's very well protective, as Trish eyes Naru. Naruto rolled his eyes, tell me something I don't know. Fine, here's something you don't know. Mondas is wearing diapers and call for mama in his sleep. Naruto and Trish stared at Nevan with a what the hell expression on their faces. For real? Trish asks. No. Now stop asking stupid questions. This castle is not only protected from any physical damage, it's also protected by a very strong illusion. Naruto narrowed his eyes. How strong? No one has ever broken free from it, Nevan said. Doesn't sound very good to me, said Trish. How interesting, said Naruto. I must definitely test this genjutsu. I think it's best if you avoid it, said Nevan. Why? Naruto asked. Well, the rumors say that this illusion was cast by an elder god. As 
partner to smile. Now, I must actually test this illusion. With an insane look on his face. You shouldn't have said that, Trish whispered. Yeah, I see that now, Nevin whispered back. Oh look, we're here, she said. As the three of them stop. Behold, the infamous Mondo's Tower, said Nevin. What's so special about it, Trish asked. You don't know, asked Nevin. And Trish shook her head no. Well, it was built as a steady portal between this world and the human world. And I was actually lady of these lands. Really? What happened? said Trish. That bastard Sparta came. Apparently he decided that leaving a portal like that, that could go to the human world, was too dangerous so he sealed it off, defeating me in the process, said Nevin. Oh, I see. Anyways, I got you here, she told Naruto. Are you sure you want to go alone? Yeah, it will be quicker that way. By the way, how many remnants are out there? Narta asked. At least two, said Nevin. They probably won't go down without at least a fight. Huh, I'd be surprised if they will, said Naruto. Well, off we go then, Nevin said as she turned around. Let's see if you can keep up with me, girl. Trish glared at her. You think you're that fast? And with that, the both of them ran away with insane speed. What's up with them? asked Yamato. Hell if I know, said Naruto as he looked at the tower. Suddenly, Naruto felt something beside him as a man casually walked up to him. Naruto narrowed his eyes at the man. A human? Naruto thought. As the man shouted damn right into Naruto's face and walked away. What the hell was that? asked Yamato. I have no idea. Naruto, you know this is it, right? Either you will return as a victor or you will die. As Naruto remained quiet, Get a grip, damn it, said Yamato. You came this far. You have no right to stop now. As Naruto started to shake, Naruto, what's wrong? asked Yamato. I'm so goddamn excited, said Naruto. This battle will be one that will be remembered for the generations to come. Sometime later, back at Konoha, Tsunade says Shizune as he bursts into the room. What is it this time? I have bad news, Tsunade sama. Huh? Our spy in Naruto high ranks has been killed yesterday. That's not good indeed, said Snade. How did it happen? He was killed, Snade, by Naruto himself. Why? asked Snade. As you ordered, Snade, he tried to prevent Naruto from going over his plans and stopping him, delaying him from attacking the moon country. But suddenly Naruto came and he didn't even let the man explain, he killed him himself. Damn you, Naruto. Why did you have to make it this difficult, said Snade. Fortunately, he still completed his task by placing a small camera in the conference room. But here comes the bad news. Huh? That wasn't the bad news? No. Not as bad as the next ones. Okay, spill it, said Snade. Naruto already gave the order to attack. His troops started marching this morning. Damn it, Snade said. I thought we had more time. And, said Shizune. That's not all? Snade asked. No, not Naruto. He went to Netherworld. God damn it, Snade screamed as she crushed her decks with her fists. Call Orochimaru now! As Shizune quickly ran off. Meanwhile, in the Netherworld, what now? Naruto asked as he was looking at a giant wall of ice. Wait, hold on. Oh yeah, I got it now, said Yamato. Say I demand passage into another world. It sounds stupid, but okay. I demand passage into another world, said Naruto. The ice then started to crack, releasing a hole on a chain that was attached to a giant three-headed dog. As the dog roared out, Leave now, mortal. The lights of you are forbidden in this land. As he came fully out of the ice. As Naruto's sweat dropped, Oh? The powerless is not worthy to step foot inside this tower. The three-headed dog said, I am the gatekeeper and I will not let any unworthy pass. I will... Say, what's your name? said Naruto cutting him off. My name? My name is... It doesn't matter what your name is. Slash. The dog howled out in pain. You're not human, are you? Tell me, where are we right now? Naruto asked, instead of giving an answer. We are at the bottom of the tower, lowest level of the netherworld, the dog said. At least you know this much. Now tell me this. How in the hell would a human get down here? Um, exactly, Naruto said. Do you have three brains? 
R is one divided equally for your three heads. And that what make you so dumb. You dare mock me, the dark said, as he breathed ice towards Naruto. Naruto vanished in a flash of black and reappeared. Whoa, you do have some skill. You better reconsider your desire to fight me though. Why is that, the dog asked. Because I'm more powerful than I look, Naruto said, as he took off his sunglasses and threw them away, opening his black eyes. So, you're a demon. Why have you come here then? You should know the seal cannot be broken without Sparta's blood. If you have come so far. Hell, I didn't know that, said Naruto. Then I suggest you leave. This tower holds nothing more. How wrong you are, said Naruto. For you see, I am not here for that stupid portal. No, 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 no. I came here searching for possible allies. The dog paused as he stared at this strange newcomer. Who are you, the dog said. You want to know who I am? Alright, I'm gonna tell you. I am the trail blazing, eyebrow raising, no soul taking, no life making, only for taking, the one who's gonna bring this world to its goddamn knees, the one and only Uzumaki Naruto. Yes, I see. I heard about you, Uzumaki Naruto. Do you want me as an ally? The dog asks. I guess, said Naruto. Tell me, what are your goals? The dog asks. My goals? Let's see. A big giant creature that sits in this castle and claim to be undefeated. I want to change that. You mean, you want to defeat Mondos? You want to take his place as an overlord? Hmm. That's a really great task. A really good goal. Well, would you aid me? Said Naruto. You would actually think that it would be that easy, right? The dog asks. Yeah, for some moments I did. But... You want to see how strong I am, right? I do indeed, said the dog. Alright then, prepare yourself, said Naruto, as he went into a fighting stance. Meanwhile, at the Hokage's office, summoning Jutsu, said Snadi, as a small slug appeared. How can I help you, late Snadi? the slug said. Call Katsuya, now. I'm sorry, Snadi-sama, but Katsuya-sama must not be disturbed. She's in a very important ritual. It's about Naruto, Orochimaru stated. The slug remained silent for some seconds. Wait there. As it then poofed away. There was another poof. As the other slug appeared. Greetings, Navi. Another slug said. Katsuya, speak very highly of you. Hokage is the eyebrow. And who might you be? My name is Katsuyuma. And I am the grand elder of the slug clan. Oh, I'm sorry if I was disrespectful, said Navi. As a slug chuckle. No need, child. I'm glad to talk to you. Face to face. Excuse me, but... Why are you here? Urchmar asks. I mean, from what the Toad Elder told us. Grand Elders cannot leave their vicinity, often. That's right, we can't. But Katsuyu cannot really come here right now. Can I ask why? Asks Navi. Very well. Katsuya is in the middle of a ritual. That will make her my successor. In other words, after my death, and once the ritual is complete, she will become the new Grand Elder of the Slug Clan. I see, said Snadi. But enough about that, I've wasted too much time already. What can you tell me about Uzumaki Naruto? As Snadi looked at Orochimaru, and nodded. Our sources say that Uzumaki Naruto entered the Hell Gate this morning. As the slug gasped, this is a disaster. You should have told me that right away. Why is it that bad? asked Navi. Because we need to try everything we have to stop him. We cannot let Overlord Mondas to be slayed or released. Release? said Orchimaru. You're telling us that he's contained? Yes, the slug said. And pretty well, if I might say. He's still in his own castle, waiting for... Waiting for what? asked Navi. The only way to unseal Mondas is to challenge him. Is it that difficult? asked Orchimaru. Countless demon tries, many greater demons, but none of them could achieve that goal. For to challenge Mondas, you must pass all challenge that is given to you by the castle. Is it that hard? asks Navi. No one know, because anyone who enter has no way back until he or she succeeds. And no one did this before? asks Navi. No, the slug said. Then why are you so afraid of Uzumaki then? asks Orchimaru. Because we believe he might very well do so. 
said the slug. But what makes him so different from other challengers? He's too human. He doesn't think like a demon and that gives him a great advantage. Uzumaki is cunning, slimy and sneaky. The quality most demons despise. Wait a second, says Nadi. I thought demons should like negative qualities. That's where you're wrong, demons, honor, things like power, desire, anger and revenge. But most demons engage their enemies face to face. Uzumaki Naruto will simply shoot an enemy in their back. Sounds like him, said Orochimaru. So what are you going to do, asked Navi. The clan, coalition army will try to protect Overlord Mando's castle with all our strength. If we fail, I am afraid to even think about it. Wait, wait, what if Uzumaki lose, asked Orochimaru. That's not good either because that will free Mondas. And that's the third worst case scenario. Third, asked Navi, what about the first and the second? The second is if Uzumaki wins. Then we will have someone even more powerful than Mondas on our hands. And the first, Navi asked, you really don't want to know that. Back at the tower, Naruto just finished slicing off a chain that was holding on to the dog, freeing him from his capture. Free at last, he said, but he just suffered a beating from Naruto. What is your beating, my master, he asked. Do you know where Mondo's castle is? Yes, I do. Great, one less problem. Now here's what you will do. Go to Mondo's castle and two friend of mine is there. Tell them that I send you and tell them to brief you. And if you see that the battle has already started, you are to kill every summons that's around you. As the dog nodded. Master, what now, said Naruto. I think you should be warned. Warned about what, Naruto asks. If you defeat Mondas, there's a chance that you can wake up Overlord Bale. Naruto eyes widen. Well, let's just hope it don't happen and he stay in that tower forever. As the dog nodded. I shall take my leave then, the remnant said as he ran away at great speed. So you got one, how many more do you want, asked Yamato. One more should be enough, we will be fighting against summons mostly. Mondos doesn't have that many servants anymore. Only Spider and Griffin are still at his side, the rest abandoned him a long time ago. Wait a second, the summons? Why would they try to stop you, Yamato asked in confusion. Oh, they will, and they will try their hardest to stop me. But I've already seen that coming. Why is that? Asked Yamato. The summons, they will be fighting without their elders. And that's a good opportunity to lower their numbers. Huh, I see now. So that is why you plan your attack in the human world at the same time. Exactly. With all the crap going on down here in hell, they won't be able to give their summoners any backup. But unlike them, I still have my ace in the hole. I told Killer B and Yujito to stay away from the main battle for the exact reason. But they won't. What? asked Yamato. I said they won't. They will break my order and attack, using their Biju strength, crushing the enemy in the process. I want to see the faces of those Konoha ninja. They try to summon and they fail once again. Alright, concentrate on fighting the second loser and beating the crap out of him, said Yamato. Sure thing. Let's go, said Naruto. Some time later, Naruto's walking through the tower. You know, I'm thinking of buying this place. Well, that's just great, said Yamato. Sparta, Sparta, said a voice as Naruto jumped back as a huge demon landed where he was. That odor, I know it, the demon said as he took a few steps forward. Really? I don't remember meeting you before, said Naruto. That sword, it holds the stench of betrayal, the odor of Sparta. As the demon clenched his fist, I am Biwol and I will destroy everything connected with Swata. And with that Biwol, launch at Naruto with his fist. Naruto quickly jumped away, neatly avoiding the strike. Oh, you're a fast one I see. As Naruto, summon Yamato in his hand, this sword belongs to me and if you say one more time that I'm connected to Sparta, I will kill you. It doesn't matter how much I want you to be alive. Don't get ahead of yourself, the demon shouted. The only one that will be killed is you. As he got on all four, and rushed forward at his top speed. As Naruto stood there waiting for him to come towards him, as Yamato started to glow with black energy, as Naruto slides in mid air, as the demon cried out in pain as cuts appeared all over his body. 
You will pay for that human, he said. Let's see about that, said Naruto. Five minutes later, what is your bidding, master? The demon asked. We're going straight to war, said Naruto. As the demon smirked, perhaps it won't be so bad to follow you, he said. Meanwhile, at the Hokage's office, Sonade, Sama, stop drinking at work, said Shizune. Shut up, Shizune. Who the hell do you think you are? Sonade, Sama. As Shizune looked down, she never saw her master in so much anger before. Know your place, or I will be looking for new assistance when you just turn up dead. As Shizune gasped, Get out of my office, said Snade, as Shizune disappeared immediately. God damn Naruto, said Snade as she poured some more drink. As she then remembered on the decks with him. Damn it, I wanted to fight him to the end, but he just come here and said a few words, and that happened, and now I want to be beside him. Why? Even though I want to get rid of him. Why? Why am I feeling this way? She cursed. You're forgetting. He gave you your age back, said a voice. Who's there? Said Snade as she quickly stand up. No one, you fool. And if you want to know who I am, look in the mirror. Snade eyes widened. As her own, reflection was talking to her. Am I that junk? She said. Huh. As she shrugged, she's going to play along with it. Can you really forgive him after what he did to Konoha? After reflection, suddenly, what Naruto said flashed in her brain. You betrayed me as well. It's one person against the entire village. Are you going to side with me or them? As she cursed herself, why was she thinking about these things? Meanwhile, at Mondo's castle outskirts, Saru were late, said Naruto, as he came to see the demons, Trish and the witch, and also the dog. And the demon was standing beside him that he just defeated. As Beryl was there as well with a smile on his face. I'm ready to take care of these summons he said. Uzumaki Naruto said a voice. As Naruto turned to see. A dragon. Huh. So the dragons decided to get their lazy ass up. Uzumaki Naruto. We. The combined clan army. Give you one chance to turn around. And get out of here. As Naruto chuckled. And why the hell would I ever do that? Because we have numbers on our side. As you can see, it's 4,000 against 6,000. You are far outmatched. Yeah, maybe. But you guys are still outmatched, said Naruto. We have very experienced warriors, said the dragon. What? I said we have very a What? I said we have- What? 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 As Naruto kept interrupting the dragon. I see. You won't back down a shame. Don't. Blame me when you lose. Know your role and shut your mouth. And the only thing is going to get loose is my boot. Straight up your candy ass, said Naruto. Now, nah, what do you say? We begin this thing, said Naruto. Kill them all, he said. As the demons rushed forward. As the summons rushed forward as well. As the dragon who was speaking to Naruto came to him. Uzumaki, I am Creighton. I have never lost in combat. And I've been training for 500 years to face off against the overlord. As a massive sword appeared in dragon right hand in a flash of light. I challenge you to a fight to the death. Naruto pulled a cola can as he drinks some cola. He then released a big burp. Well, hell with it. I am Uzumaki Naruto. I never lost in a cola drinking competition. That is better than you never losing in a fight. You want to know why? Why? Because there is no reason why, said Naruto. Because Naruto said so. And by the way, look at you. Come on, look at you. And then look back at me. Now look at them, Naruto said, as he pointed at his comrades. These guys who are trashing your army. What did you call it again? The clan. And Naruto doesn't care, Naruto shouted out. Let me tell you something. Those guys who are destroying your army right now. I defeated all the main bosses over there. The strongest. And you, little piece of trash. Winged bird, think you can defeat me? Now, that isn't fair. You dare disrespect me, Uzumaki? You know what? When I kill you, I'm gonna cut off your wings. Yeah, I'm gonna cut off your wings. And I'm gonna fry them. I wonder if they taste like bat wings. Said Naruto that smirk. The dragon let out a roar as he rushed forward. But guys, be in this episode right here. If you want to see the next part of this, you already know what to do. Like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn that bell notification as they posted. Remember to share all of your friends to your social media platform and go ahead and check out all the what ifs that I post today. And yeah guys, I'm out for now. See you guys tomorrow. Peace.